Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a blue red mill deck. And our deck name is actually an acronym, which stands for Ruining Author's Fun by Library Milling All Opponents, because our win condition is to let the opponent draw a card from an empty library. And to help us in that quest, we can count on the full playset of Tasha's Hideous Laughter from the Forgotten Realms expansion, a 3 mana rare sorcery, says each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until that player has exiled cards with total mana value 20 or more. And because lands have a mana value of 0, we can count on Hideous Laughter milling about 12 or 13 cards on average, and against a very low curve deck, we can maybe mill a few extra cards in the process. Then we also have the full play set of Maddening Cacophony, which for 2 mana mills 8 cards, can also kick it for additional 4 mana, in which case we can mill half of the opponent's library rounded up. And then the full play set of Ruined Crab, a 1 mana 03 crab that helps us justify the deck's acronym as well. And with a landfall, we can mill the opponent for 3. So that's also the reason why we're playing the full play set of Evolving Wilds, so we can trigger landfall twice. And then we also have a few ways to copy our instants and sorceries, so we can potentially double up on Cacophony and Hideous Laughter with the full playset of Dual Strike, can pay 2 mana to exile it and then cast it for a single red later, and then when we cast our next instant or sorcery spell with mana value 4 or less at this turn, we get to copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy. And we also have the full playset of Teach by Example, which is always 2 mana and doesn't have those mana cost restrictions. And then to round out the deck, we've got a bit of removal. We do have 20 Snowlands in the mana base to power up our 4 copies of Frostbite, so we can potentially deal 3 damage to a creature if we have 3 of those Snowlands in play. And then we also have the full playset of Tundra of Humeral, a 3 mana Snow Sorcery, dealing 4 damage to a creature or Planeswalker. And then we get to add Colorless to our mana pool for each Snow mana spent to cast it, and that mana doesn't go away until end of turn. So we can potentially use that Colorless mana to foretell one of our cards, like Dual Strike or the two copies of Behold the Multiverse, a 4 mana instant that lets us scry to and then draw to, but we can also foretell it and then cast it for just one and a blue in a future turn. And then we've got another card draw spell with the Graven Lore, 5 mana Snow Instant, lets us scry X, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it, and then we get to draw 3. So that's also a great card to play in the same turn as a Tundra Fumeral, because the colorless mana from Fumeral will also count as snow mana, since it's coming from a snow sorcery. And then we've got the full playset of Expressive Iteration as another very powerful card draw effect, which we usually don't want to cast until turn 3, so we can exile a land with it and play it for the turn, and then keep whatever card we want in our hand. And then the mana base, as we mentioned, 10 of each snow-covered basic and 4 copies of Evolving Wilds, so very budget-friendly mana base, but it also maximizes the number of snow sources for various snow cards. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand seems pretty decent. Rune Crab to kick things off. Turn 2 can foretell Behold the Multiverse. And then probably wait until turn 5 to double Hideous Laughter. Sometimes it can be worth it to wait on Rune Crab until turn 2, so we don't expose it to removal. But in this case, we need our second turn to foretell and behold the multiverse. Opponent playing the red green bard deck that we maybe featured a couple days ago. And yeah, bard class can enable some scary starts for the deck. As we see, a one mana Magda. So, probably gonna be holds, keeping red mana in case we find frostbite. As we see, two frostbites from the opponent's milled. Iteration's nice, but I think I would rather find a frostbite here. Although, yeah, iteration's a great play for next turn where we didn't have anything else planned. So, I'll keep the iteration bottom mountain. And there's a Frostbite, well that's just perfect. Kill Magda, before she can make any treasure, and then next turn can Iteration hit my land drop, 
Maybe find another interactive spell. Chariot's pretty good. For just three mana, thanks to the Bard class discount. Alright, Evolving Wilds is a fine one to just play for the turn. So in my hands, I'll put Iteration on the bottom islands and an Exile Evolving Wilds. And then we'll just fetch a mountain right now. Alright, so we've got plenty of card draw in hand. Next turn, teach by example, copy Hideous Laughter. Opponent with 38 cards in library, so... Yeah, the Bard class deck does have a relatively high curve, because it does use Bard class to get a discount on a lot of cards. So we might not mill too many cards with Hideous Laughter. But we might have a few extra turns before we're dead. Depends whether the opponent has a big scary dragon they can play here. Alright, no hasty dragons. That's good. Just a Bard class level up. Don't mind seeing that. And there's the Inferno I was talking about. So teach by example into Hideous Laughter. And yeah, not the best Hideous Laughter. Only XL 20 total, so an average of 10. Good news is we still have a Ruined Crab in play. Opponent's got 13 cards left. So it might only take a single Hideous Laughter or Cacophony to end the game for us. And our opponent is exiling a lot of cards with their own Bard class, so they have to be careful that they don't deck themselves. Maybe trying to present lethal for next turn. Can block a cat token. I guess let's see. Arnie can boast. Base power becomes 1 plus the greatest power among other creatures they control. So that can go up to 8. So if I block a cat, then I would be taking Exaxes. So I have to chum block Arnie actually. Well, that's too bad. So our opponent has seven cards remaining and we top deck Cacophony. Let's see if we can find another mill card just out of curiosity. We would not have. So yeah, pretty lucky to top deck the Cacophony here. Would have gotten another spin at the wheel with uh, Iteration. So let's see if we would have found another mill spell here. We would not have, so yeah. Got to dig pretty deep still, but... Luckily we still had a Cacophony, and that should end the game before taking a lethal attack. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a decent hand. Just missing a third land, both the red and blue. So, yeah, I guess we'll try it. Hopefully find a red mana early, so we can at least defend ourselves with double Fumeral. And I do want to play our island on turn 1, that way if I draw a Rune Crab I can play it and still trigger Landfall on turn 2. Alright, there's my second red. So, I'm gonna hold on to the Cacophony. Opponent doesn't appear to be incredibly aggressive, so I can maybe hold it to play it with Kicker. And yeah, there's not much going on, so we'll just pass it back. We're happy to play against slow controlling decks that Maybe are just holding a bunch of removal spells. And now I can foretell dual strike. And then next turn maybe copy hideous laughter if we draw an island. If not, I can uh, 
Maybe save it for something else. I guess we could just uh, teach by example hideous laughter if we draw an island. Alright, there's a Neverwinter Dried, so our opponent was maybe just missing green mana. So it might be a Skeletal Swarming deck. There's Ruin Crab a bit late to the party. Don't really feel like playing it if I can't play a land right away. And Killing Dried also doesn't accomplish anything since they can just sacrifice it. So I could teach by example Cacophony, maybe that's fine. Since it doesn't look like I'm going to get to the mana to kick Cacophony anytime soon. And then I can still double my Hideous Laughter with a Dual Strike. So mill for 16. And yeah, there we saw double Skeletal Swarming go to the graveyard. Vorpal Sword. So this might be our Skeletal Sword deck from a few weeks ago. There's Professor Onyx. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, a Tundra Fumeral does deal damage to Planeswalkers as well. So that's still one way to maybe take out Professor Onyx. But the plus one also mills the opponent, so it's kind of helping our mill game plan. So, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do next turn. Draw another Fumeral. Well, I guess we'll just deal four to the Professor. Could copy with Dual Strike, but really want to save this for Hideous Laughter. And then, still not really interested in playing my crab out. So we'll just have to pass it back. Plenty of cards in hand for our opponents. Now the mana costs in the black-green deck are pretty high, so the hideous laughter is probably not going to mill a whole lot. And there's a Skeletal Swarming. All right, there's a land, although still no double blue. So I guess it's just Rune Crab and Fumarol the Professor. The Crab's probably going to die before it gets to mill again. But that's why we waited until we drew a line to play it. And take out Professor. So our opponent has 21 cards remaining. So there's a good chance that we win the game if we draw an island and get to double Hideous Laughter. It's not a guarantee. So that should keep things exciting. Another Professor Onyx, yeah. Point's gonna plus again, so... Now they're probably dead if we can double Hideous Laughter. 17 cards remaining. Take one, opponent makes a skeleton. Frostbite to draw instead. Well, I might have to start taking out Skeletons now, and ignore the Professor. So... Just kill both. And do it in my turn, so we don't trigger the opponent's Skeletal Swarming. Alright, still hoping for an island of the top. By killing the skeletons, we also avoid dying to a Vorpal Sword, which our opponents would be pretty close to playing, equipping and activating. Professor Onyx pluses. Getting to the point where a single Hideous Laughter could win the game, or maybe even a single Cacophony if we top deck it. But we can also copy a Cacophony, so that would be another winning draw. Field trip. So between Cacophony and Basic Islands, we have quite a few outs. A 
confront the past to get back. Professor Onyx from the graveyard, potentially. Another field trip. The Magecraft triggers are also adding up. Mascot exhibition, yep. Yeah. Opponent makes a skeleton, and there's the island at long last. Let's see if the first hideous laughter would have been enough. 11 cards left. And yeah, it looks like one hideous laughter would have done it. Alright, very close game against Skeletal Swarming. If our opponent had Vorpal Sword in hand, we could have been dead next turn. Although, I guess we can take a look at their graveyards, see how many Vorpal Swords were gone. I see one here. And if it's the list we featured, it usually has three. And I think we got rid of all three in the end. But there was one still left in their library. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. We'll need an extra blue source, but... Let's see, do I even play Rune Crab? I don't think I do, since... I don't have anything going on on turn two. And if our opponent has, like, a Blood Chief's Thirst, they could kill my Crab before I get to mill. Of course, now we drew the Dual Strike, so I would have been able to foretell this. But I can still do so on turn three, which... Would have gone uh, unspent as well. Opponent a green white life gain deck and moon dancer on turn two. Yeah, if I don't draw a frostbite here, that could get out of hand. Find behold the multiverse instead. All right, so I think I need to foretell this as opposed to dual strike to try and hit my land drop for next turn. And then, yeah, the Moon Dancer is probably going to be too big for me to take out with any burn spell. Wouldn't be able to cast Fumeral, so maybe a double Frostbite can still get the job done. Alright, Island's good. So what do we want to do now? Probably kick things off with Behold the Multiverse. And then do I keep double red untapped? I think I do. Could also double Behold the Multiverse with Teach by example. But if I keep double red I could technically still draw double Frostbite to take out Moondancer. That's not super realistic, so maybe I'm better off going double Behold. And then next turn, double Hideous Laughter. Could have done this in the opponent's turn too, I suppose, but yeah, I'll keep both. So that gives me the fifth land for Hideous Laughter, and then... Teach by example Evolving Wild seems like a good pairing because I only need four mana to copy the uh, Cacophony and then Evolving Wilds goes well with the Crab. So I think we've got our plan here. I need to survive two more attack steps. We'll see if we manage to do that. Skyclave Cleric, yep. Yeah. So our opponent does get the Valkyrie bonus. And yeah, I'm taking 12, 15, so I'm probably dead next turn. So, let's do some math. Bones got 40 cards remaining. Yeah, the chances of double hideous laughter winning the game are pretty low. But Evolving Wilds double cacophony doesn't seem much better here. So I guess we'll go with the hideous laughter. Yeah, we probably only needed one more turn. 
between the uh, Evolving Wilds and then the double Cacophony. But yeah, the turn to Moondancer was quite effective. Well, we got pretty close. Six cards left. Managed to mill 34 with double Hideous Laughter. So a bit above average, but this is also a relatively low curve deck. So I can chum block with the Moon Dancer, still take 10 damage at least. Opponent's drawing with a priest, playing with fire here. But still four cards remaining. All right. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand is keepable, not perfect, but uh, can fetch our blue mana to play Rune Crab. And then I'll have to decide whether or not I want to play an early Cacophony or hold it to maybe copy it. Opponent Black Green, turn one Eye Twitch, so Black Green Sacrifice deck. So, can fire off the Fumeral next turn, but not really interested in taking out Eye Twitch. Maybe if they play Wither Bloom Apprentice. Alright, Iteration's a great card for now. And then I want to put Hideous Laughter in hand, I believe, and play the Islands. Alright. So I think I'm gonna play the Cacophony next turn. Then turn 5, Graven Lore, maybe even Fumeral into Graven Lore. And then I can keep the Hideous Laughter to copy it with a Teach by Example or a Dual Strike. Let's see a Skeletal Swarming in the opponent's graveyard. Dispute Sacking Eye Twitch. Maybe gets an answer for the Ruin Crab. Or if they can just get a Pest Summoning, which is kind of the default option. Okay, the card draw spells also helping our mill game plan a little bit. And there's a best summoning, not too threatening. So, yeah, I think a cophony is fine here. Hang on to the fumeral in case they play a scarier creature. Most of these decks play Witherbloom Apprentice and Sedgemore Witch with a Plum the Forbidden package. Should be safe to block a pest. Lair of the Hydra coming into play tapped, so not gonna see a Skeletal Swarming this turn. Instead Soul Shatter to kill my crab, fair enough. Yeah, still not really interested in casting Fumeral, so I'm just gonna pass and cast an Instant Speed Gravenlore. Which will dig pretty deep to find a copy effect for Hideous Laughter. So, yeah, against these kind of mid rangey slower black-green decks, we usually have a favorable matchup. In response to the Disciple, we should draw. Okay, so I like the Dual Strike, I like the Rune Cramp, I want to keep at least one land, and Iteration seems good too. So, yeah, those are all good. And then I'll probably discard maybe Fumeral over Frostbite, since I don't expect any big creatures from the opponent. Even though Fumeral we can kind of cast for free here. Still probably not interested in taking out anything. Right, experts can have a look at two cards. I guess we give them Iteration and Graven Lore. Or maybe Iteration and Frostbite, and they can pick whichever they prefer. Takes Iteration. Let's 
So next turn we can play Rune Crab, play Islands, and then dual strike Hideous Laughter. Right. Opponent plays their land untapped. Probably a Plum of the Forbidden if I had to guess. So 26 cards remaining, there's a good chance that this double hideous laughter is lethal. And our opponent's not even gonna have a look here, but yeah, looking at their average mana costs, they didn't seem particularly high. So pretty confident that uh, double hideous laughter would have been game here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Can copy hideous laughter on turn 4. Maybe interact a little bit with our Frostbite. Just gonna fetch my Mountain right away. Could get punished if I top deck a Ruin Crab, but so be it. Green-White, so could this be another life gain deck? Alright, this time we have the answer for the turn to Moon Dancer. Could even take a small risk by waiting a turn. Although I don't really want my opponent to scry in the meantime. And it is possible for them to put two counters on it, so... Not gonna take any risks, we'll just foretell the dual strike next turn. Turn 4, double hideous laughter. Turn 5, refuel with the Graven Lore. It's gonna be Angel of Vitality, turn 3. That's fine. Cleric class can maybe get back a creature on the third chapter. So that's pretty effective against our mill strategy, although luckily Hideous Laughter exiles cards instead of just putting them in the graveyard. Angel Vitality does grow into a 4-4 thanks to the extra life gain from Cleric class. Alright, time for double Hideous Laughter. Alright, opponent's got 15 cards left, we milled 34, so pretty good average. Got a lot of lands. Another Revitalize. Into Innkeeper. So not the uh, most pressure in play at the moment, which is good. And another Hideous Laughter could just be game. It's interesting, because if I Graven Lore, it's a bit more mana efficient, and then I'm pretty likely to find a copy effect for Hideous Laughter, or maybe another mill card, and then I'm more likely to kill the opponent next turn. Whereas if I Hideous Laughter and I don't quite kill them, then I wouldn't be able to Graven Lore and mill the opponent. So given that they only have 5 power in play, I think it's relatively safe to just go for the Graven Lore here. And next turn Hideous Laughter should have played my island, because now I won't be able to double Hideous Laughter next turn. But any copy effect is good, Cacophony will be great too. And of course there's still a chance that a single Hideous Laughter is enough to win the game here. So scheduled to take 5. Even with the Valkyrie we would only be taking 9 damage. So yeah, without that early Frostbite on Moon Dancer, we definitely would have been dead by now. Just goes to show how much difference an early spot removal spell can make. Time for Gravenlore. And with a Scry 5, it's unlikely to miss, and there we go. Double Cacophony will do it too. Hideous Laughter. Looks like it would have done it. Alright, and there's the explosion. So, yeah, we lost a game to the Green-White Life Gain deck, but we managed to win the rematch. 
So overall, pretty pleased with this Blue Red Mill deck. So if you want to try out Hideous Laughter, this might be the shell for you. That'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.